Welcome to the Putting Your Business on the Map podcast. My name is Landon Blake. I am your podcast host. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the podcast. If you're curious and you'd like to learn more, we have a special page for the podcast up at www.landonblake.com. Make sure you check that out. We've got our show notes there. You can also Download the podcast in your favorite audio format. You should also be able to find the podcast on Spotify and on uh, YouTube. So we've got the, the podcast episodes in both of those places. So if you use one of those uh, apps or services, you can subscribe to the podcast there. Full disclaimer, I record most of these episodes at my home in Stockton, California. I am married to a crazy Mexican woman, and I have two dogs, so you may hear her or the dogs during the podcast episode. I just want to warn you ahead of time. I love all three of them, but they are noisy. So if you would like to sponsor a private recording studio for the podcast, make sure you reach out to me and let me know that. Otherwise, you may have some background noise. So with that disclaimer out of the way, we're going to jump right in to today's episode. The title of today's episode is Creating a Strategic Plan for Your Surveying and Mapping Organization. I believe that's a really important uh, thing to do uh, if you run a small surveying or mapping business. And so we're going to talk today about how you might do that and what kind of structure your plan might have. So before we dive into kind of an overview of the episode today. Let me just quickly give you a definition. So when I talk about a strategic plan in our episode today, what am I talking about? Uh, So I'm talking about a plan that describes your market and your organization's position in the market. So that's, that's what I call positioning strategy. If you listen to couple of our previous episodes, you would have heard me talk about that. Now, in this podcast, when I say organization or business, I I mean, that could be a a private business. It could be an organization. It could be a nonprofit or a governmental agency, or it could just be a team or a department. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today applies to all those different types of groups. Okay, I'm going to use the term business, but it, it could be a department or a government agency nonprofit team, all of those things. So a strategic plan is a plan that defines your positioning strategy. It, it could also be a plan that lists a handful of your midterm to long-term goals. So your really important goals and your approach to comp, uh, uh, your approach to accomplishing those goals. That would be what I call execution strategy, not positioning strategy. And so your strategic plan may have a little bit of both. It may have some positioning strategy, and it may have some execution strategy. And you're going to see when we go over the example strategic plan structure that that we talk about in the episode, you're going to see there are elements of of both kinds of strategy in in the template that we're going to talk about or the example that we're going to talk about. Now, I will tell you the way I have been working on strategic plans, they do need a corresponding tactical plan. So strategic plans... The way I do them are kind of high level, big picture. Tactical plans are more concrete and short term, more focused. So as a general rule, my strategic plans are looking three to five years uh, where uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to do tactical plans uh, on, a, on a yearly basis. In other words, they, they look ahead for typically for one year and get updated on an annual basis. So what are we going to talk about in the episode Today, we are going to talk about number one, what is the purpose of a strategic plan? Number two, the parts of a strategic plan. And number three, just some tips to help you start fleshing out the the strategic plan for your business. Uh, It can be overwhelming. I know I feel overwhelmed at times. And so I'm going to share, I don't know, I have a half a dozen or so things that might help you get started. What are we not going to talk about today? We are not going to talk about tactics how to execute your strategic plan, specific positioning trade-offs, or specific strategies. We may talk about some of that in other uh, future episodes or in extras, but I'm not going to get into that today. 
I had initially toyed around with the idea of, of talking about our strategic plan at RH today or uh, developing a strategic plan with you guys for a, for a survey organization. I decided not to do that in this podcast, primarily because I don't, I don't want you guys to just think that, that you can take that recipe and apply it to your own business because you probably can't. Uh, our business at RH is very unique and your businesses you know, you, your circumstances, even if your business isn't unique, your circumstances are, are unique, you're a unique person. So I wanted to just do an episode where I just kind of talked about this in a general way. <clears throat> I may, in, maybe in the future, I'll go in and we'll, we'll do something a little more, uh, a little more specific, but I wanted to be, be careful about that initially. So why is this important? Why, why is it important to have a strategic plan for your business? Um, I, there's a couple reasons I think this is important. One is, you know, I'll illustrate it this way, you know, a ship without a rudder is almost impossible to steer. So, you know, having a strategic plan, even if it's not perfect, is, is like a rudder and it makes it a little easier to steer your ship um, to make sure everybody's kind of trying to sail or row in the, in the same direction. Um, and, it, and it helps provide your team. The other thing it does, the second reason it's important is it it helps provide your team with some focus, with a list of priorities, with some alignment, you know, alignment on the, everybody knows the goals. The, you know, it helps your team understand the big picture and the goals that the, that the, uh, the business is trying to accomplish. So I do think a strategic plan is really important. Now, I will tell you, we didn't have a written strategic plan for a long, long time here at RH, and we still, it's still not finished. We have what I would, would call a working document, but... Uh, all three principals had a really good idea of what that, what would, what, what was in our strategic plan was in our heads and we discussed it even though it was written down. Now, I don't encourage that approach. Um, I always tell people about survey guidelines or workflows that they don't count or CAD standards. They don't count if they're not written down. Um, but I, you know, confession here, we, we worked the first three years at RH, three or so years of without a written down strategic plan. Um, so don't do that. Don't, don't be like us. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm doing this episode is because I want to encourage you to, to get your strategic plan down on paper. Okay. That's going to bring us to the first main section of this episode, which is what is the purpose of a strategic plan? So I have five things that I think a strategic plan can do for you if, if it's crafted intelligently. So, uh, number one, it provides you, you with context. In other words, it helps you answer the question, what is happening around us in the profession, in the real estate market, in the world, in the econ you know, in the economy. So it helps provide context. Um, the second thing it does is it provides self-awareness. So it, it forces you to stop for a minute and answer questions like, who are we as a business? What are we doing as a business? You know, what do we, what do, we do different from others? The third thing it does is it helps you set and prioritize your major goals, at least, you know, over a two to five year period, let's say. So it, that's really important. You want that to be clear. Um, it, if, if it's done right, it can support the, de help you um, uh, develop cor the, the corresponding annual tactical plans. So you have a three to five year strategic plan. You can, you can have annual tactical plans that, that you craft that, that fit well with your strategic plan. At least that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. And then the fifth thing is it can help you evaluate your progress towards your important goals. Of course, if you don't have your important goals written down and something like strategic plan, it's hard to look back on a, you know, annual or twice a year basis and, and ask yourself and your team, how, how are we doing on these big picture goals? So I think for, for, uh, I think your strategic plan should facilitate those five things. Provide context, provide self-awareness, help you set and prioritize major goals, support the development of tactical plans, and help you evaluate, uh, evaluate your progress towards your goals. Okay, so now we're, that second section of the episode is, is where we're really going to get into kind of the meat and potatoes. So it'll, it'll be the longest part of the episode, and that is what are the parts of a strategic plan? Now, I didn't give you my, my standard SLB disclaimer at the beginning of the episode. So let me do that now. What we're about to talk about is just one example 
of how you might structure a strategic plan. There are so many different ways you can do this. And I want to let you guys know, I did a ton of research when I was getting ready to work on the RH strategic plan. Um, and there's all kinds of examples and different ways to do this. And so this is what I blended together from some of the examples I found that I thought worked well for us. And I wanted to share it with you guys, but there are so many different ways to do this. This is just one way. Don't feel like you, don't feel like you have to do it. You don't, don't, don't feel like you have to structure your strategic plan in this way because you don't. But I wanted to give you, you you a starting place. You, the listeners, I wanted to give you a starting place if, if you didn't have one. Okay, so I am briefly going to just go over the parts of the plan, and then we're going to dive into each one. So I call them the room, the mirror, um, let's see, the SWAT, the trade-offs, and the goals. So I think there's five, five sections there, and we're going to dive into each one of those a little bit. So let's just start with uh, the room. So I use the, I use the room to describe the context. In other words, the part of the economy that your business is operating in. And then I use the term the mirror, like you can imagine a full length mirror on the wall or on a stand that you look into. That that is self reflecting, right? You're looking inside. So in in the First part of the plan, the room, you're looking out. You're looking around you in the room. The second part of the plan, the mirror, you're looking at yourself or you're looking at your own organization. Okay, so we're going to start with the room. So what goes in that section of your strategic plan? As I mentioned, the room provides context, right? So it's going to help you answer questions like, what is our market? You know, what's our place in the market or our market niche? What are conditions currently like in our market? What will conditions be like in our market? Um, in the near term and the long term, how is that going to change potentially? What trends are going to drive those changes? Who are the direct competitors to our business? Who are the indirect competitors to our business, which sometimes can be a more important question? Who is our typical client? Who is not our typical client? What do we believe to be true about the about the marketplace and the economy? How will that impact us? So this part of the strategic plan, the room, Helps you answer all those questions. Now, if you're th if you're a nonprofit or a government agency, you might be thinking none of that applies to me. I don't think that's true. Uh, you know, if you if you work as the survey manager for a small city or county, you compete with other jurisdictions for you know business. Uh, you you know your client is typically going to be members of the public in your jurisdiction, right? You want to provide them with good client service, and certainly things like technological change. You know, technology um, is and, and regulatory change too. Those are all going to impact how you provide service as as a as a nonprofit or a government. So I think this is important, even if you're if you're not just running a business. So what sections do I put in this part of the strategic plan? So the first thing I do is I identify. We try and identify what are the trends going on in the world around us that are going to have an impact on our business in the next three to five years. I'll just give you a quick example. You know, UAV technology is one example that is really changing the way we're, that we work. So trends, there's some funky things going on with the housing market right now, which impacts us as a business and not just housing, but the office market and commercial real estate. So we try and identify some of those things. Another section we have subsection is, is like fundamental truths that we believe to be true about uh, the market and the economy that we're working in. Um, then we then we like to talk about who are you know who are our friends, uh, who are our enemies, who are our frenemies, um, and it, and it's not even necessarily specific organizations or companies that you list there. I try and keep this general, you know, like uh, who are our our typical business partners, who are our typical clients, what do they look like? So it's it's types. Right? Who, who, what types of clients do we work for? What types of partners do we have? Well, what types of people in the market are not our client? So, for example, for our business, you know, our, uh, we, we may work with a uh, commercial land developer. So that would be an example of a type of client that we work with uh, or, or a utility company. That's another type of client we work with. But we also have some non-client types. So we don't typically work for single family homeowners. We don't work for land developers that are developing single-family homes, typically. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. 
Um, if you want some help with this part of your plan, uh, I encourage you to check out the business model canvas. I'll try and remember to have Carly put a link to that website in the show notes, but the business model canvas kind of shows you the different, the different players that we've been talking about. And so that's where you write this kind of stuff down. So remember, it's to provide context, right? You're looking around. You're looking around your business and saying, who, who do we interact with or could we potentially interact with and what's going on in that sphere? You know, what's going on in that sphere? Okay, the second part of the strategic plan is what I call the mirror. Remember, that's self-reflection. So we're looking, we're looking at ourselves as an organization, uh, provides self-awareness, and it answers these kinds of questions. Uh, who are our most important clients? Uh, who do we want to stop working for, potentially? What does our team currently look like? You know, what type of people are working for us? What's the, what's the makeup of our team? What, what would we like our team to look like in the future? How do we want our team to change or to improve? What tools are we currently using? Well, you know, equipment, software, are we using those tools properly? Are we using them effectively? Are there tools that we want to acquire that we don't have yet? Are there tools we want to stop using? How are we managing our team? You know, what are our management practices? What areas are there to improve in that aspect of our business? Uh, you know, do we need to change our management practices? Uh, how is our team executing the, the technical aspects of our work? You know, is this execution effective? Are there things that we want to do differently there? Um, so what kind of, what parts or subsections might you have in this part of the strategic plan, the, the, what I call the mirror? Uh, so you might have a list of your clients. So now we're getting very specific, right? Uh, so you might list specific clients, short-term or long-term clients. You might talk about some char characteristics of your team. So you've heard me say before, our team is by far the majority of our employees are female. Most of our employees are under 30, 30 or under. Um, so there are some, you know, those are characteristics of our team. You might talk about the tools, equipment, and software that you use. You might talk about your financial health, talk about your business management practices, talk about your technical work. So those are all subsections you could put in this part of the strategic plan that I'm calling the mirror. Now, I will let you know, there's a lot of other stuff that you could put in here. Put, put in this section of the plan the things about your business that you think are important or maybe that you think need the most improvement. Um, you know, it could be your, your HR, some, some aspects of your HR or um, risk management practices or, um, you know, how you, how you have grown or how you want to grow. There's all kinds of things that you could, you know, training could, could be its own section of this plan. So I just gave you an example of what, what's in our plan at our age. But, I mean, there's, you could put a lot of stuff in here. So, and don't, don't feel like you have to put everything in at once. You know, I imagine at some point in this part of our strategic plan, we will want to talk about some of those things like uh, uh, how we're developing our, our human capital and, uh, you know, training and those kinds of, those kinds of things. Um, so there's, you can put, you know, put a lot in here in this, in this section where you're, where you're taking a look at your own business. Okay. The next part of, of the strategic plan outline or template that, that we use, that I use, is, is what I call SWOT. You probably, you, you may have heard of that before. It stands, it's an abbreviation or an acronym that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So you go in and you look at what are the strengths of your business, what are the weaknesses of your business, what are the opportunities you can capitalize on, what are the threats, you know, what's dangerous. You're going to want to take a look at the other parts of your plan, right? You can look at, at the room and the mirror to, to fill out your SWOT. That's why I, in my outline, the SWOT comes after, right? So you, you're going you're gonna to practice some awareness of the context and some self-awareness before you get to your SWOT. That's why I structured it this way. Um, now, I will tell you here that just because you identify and understand a, a weakness or a threat doesn't mean that necessarily that there is something for you to fix. And that's because there's trade-offs in strategic positioning. So if you're doing if you're doing your strategic positioning correctly, you are inherently going to have some some weaknesses, um, you know, or things that your company or, or organization is not good at. So if you if you're going to differentiate and intelligently position your business in a strategic way, um, you're not going to be all things to all people. You know, you can't 
you can't build stadiums, do a good job building stadiums as a land surveyor. You can't do a good job helping people build stadiums and also be uber competitive on lot surveys for single family homeowners. It's just, I think it's impossible to do both. Um, so there, there's going to be some inherent trade-offs. So, but that doesn't mean you don't under, identify and understand the weaknesses and threats there, right? But just because you list them doesn't necessarily mean they need a, a fix or a solution, but be aware of them, right? Because that, that will help you more effectively manage and run your business. Okay, on a related note, the next section of the strategic plan template that I use is uh, what, I, what I call the trade-off section. And that's where you just go in and make your trade-offs explicit. And, and remember, if you have a good positioning strategy, you're going to have some trade-offs. So don't, don't force your, your, your managers and your other team members to guess on what those trade-offs are. Just make them explicit in this part of your strategic plan so that everybody understands them. Um, and in, uh, in, in our previous episode about uh, business strategy, I talked a little bit about that article from HBR, Harvard Business Review, by Michael Porter called What is Strategy? And this is what he really talks about in the article. Um, he talks about, you know, good strategy, what I call positioning strategy, is about making trade-offs. So if you haven't read that article yet, go do that. I'll try and remember to have Carly put, that, put a link to that article in the show notes. So make your trade-offs explicit. How do you do that? There's a couple different ways you can do that. You could, you, could, you could phrase that as X versus Y. So for example, one of our trade-offs is we are, we are survey only. So you, you might label that trade-off survey only versus civil survey. So most of, almost all of our competitors are do civil engineering and surveying. So there's some trade-offs there, right? That means there's some things that we do better. There's some things that we don't do as well because we don't have civil in-house. So you could you could do that you could label it as X versus Y, or you could say, you could you could title it or label it. We've chosen to do X, so we can't or we won't do Y. So you might say, we've chosen to provide effective capabilities for large infrastructure projects, so we will not be price competitive at lot surveys for single family homeowners. So you could word it that way. That's a little more wordy, but the same basic concept, right? So there's some trade-off there. And then after you've identified your trade-offs in that way, you can go in and flesh the details out a little bit if you want. So you could define the trade-off, talk about what the consequences are. There's going to be direct consequences. There's going to be some ripple effects. Um, as part of the trade-off, that means there's things you're going to you're going to have to do, you must do, or things you must not do. So, for example, at my company, we do not prepare you know, full length proposals every time somebody calls here for a lot survey. We just, we do not do that and we can't. We can't do that and be effective at the other things we're trying to do because of some of the trade offs that we've made. I would also tell you that you probably need one more than one thing listed here. So if you only have one trade off, you probably haven't done a good job differentiating yourself or, or refining your positioning strategy. So, you know, you should probably have a stack of trade offs here. I don't know, three. Six trade-offs, nine. I mean, I could probably easily give you somewhere between six and 12 trade-offs that Redefine Horizons has made. Um, you know, I wonder a little bit if this is kind of related to, to, to what they call the innovation stack. Uh, there's a really cool book I highly recommend. It's one of my favorite, favorite business books called The Innovation Stack. It's by one of the, the guys that founded Square, uh, the payment processing company Square. So... I'll try and remember to ask Carly to put that in the show notes, a uh, link to that book on Amazon, but super cool. So yeah, you should you should probably have more than one trade-off here. And if you read that article by Michael Porter, uh, he talks about, for example, like Southwest. They have a whole set of these trade-offs. Right? That's a good positioning strategy. This may be, I, I don't think it's the most important part of, the, of your strategic plan, but it's probably number two. So this is a critical part, right? This is how you differentiate from the surveyor or the mapper down the street, right, is by determining what trade-offs you are going to make as an, as an organization. So it's really important you need to give it some thought. Okay, the last section of the strategic plan outline that I use is, is simple. It's just the goals, the goals that your organization wants to accomplish. Remember, strategic plan is midterm to long-term, so three to five years. So these are broad and big picture goals. They can be related to any aspect of your business. So you're free to pick here. Uh, but I will tell you, if, if you put a goal in this part of your strategic plan, 
your your management team or ownership team should be ready to commit resources to, to reaching this goal. If your if your if your management team isn't ready to commit resources, then don't put it as a goal here because there's no way to reach a goal as a business without the commitment of some resources. There's just no way around that. So don't put stuff in here that you're not actually going to commit to doing. Um, and you also want to choose goals that, that you can achieve with, you know, these need to be high level enough goals, hopefully that you can achieve them with different approaches or tactics. So you need, you want these goals to be high enough or broad enough where you can pivot if needed. Um, the more specific things go in your in, in would go in your annual tactical plan. So I'll give you an example of, of what I, of a good example and a bad example. A good example of a of a broad goal that can go in your strategic plan is we want to improve the financial health of the principals over the next eighteen months. Um, now, yeah, you could even be more specific. You could say something like, we want to make sure the principals are paid on time every payroll for the next 18 months. Okay, so that's pretty broad. There are different tactics you can execute to achieve that goal, okay? Here's a bad example. We wanna make sure that Taco Bell pays their their past due invoice for the uh, site topo and boundary we did uh, three weeks ago, right? That's super concrete in short time frame. That does not belong to your strategic plan, right? Um, that, that's too specific. So you want to try and keep your goals broad. Um, remember, this, this, is, this, is, this is basically the whole point of doing the strategic plan is so that you can set some goals for the next three to five years and then achieve those. You know, the, the, everything that comes before this part of, this, of the strategic plan is to help you have, get the understanding you need to properly define your goals, right? So... Don't leave this section out. It's the most important section. It, it should get you and your team ready to do something, right? And you're going you're gonna to use your tactical plans to flesh that out. We'll do an episode just, just about, uh, about tactical plans. Okay, let me just take a breath there. So now that I've given you that outline, and remember, you can change it. How do you flesh out a strategic plan? So if you have you have an outline now or, or similar outline, uh, what do you do next? So you want to start sketching out the content for each of the parts that we talked about. Remember, there's the room, the mirror, your SWAT, the trade-offs you're going to make, the goals for your business. So start sketching that out. What I would encourage you to do is use bulleted lists. Don't try and write full paragraphs, at least not to start. Be okay with empty sections or with, with sections that are half-baked. It's all right. Ask for help. Get help from your team. Get help from outsiders. We tried to make some of our strategic plan a, a group effort here. We tried to include all of our employees in that. Don't aim for perfection. You hear me say that a lot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Even, even a, a half-complete, imperfect strategic plan, in my opinion, is better than no plan at all. So don't strive for perfection. And then remember, it's a living document. It can and it should change. So our strategic plan isn't complete. We've been in business for over four years, going on year number five. I'm still working on the strategic plan. I'll be working on it this next week. I don't think it's ever going to be finished. The strategic plan will need to change as the world around us. The world around us changes, as technology changes, as the economy changes, as our business changes. So it's, it's going to be a continual work in progress, and you should probably be going in to update your strategic plan on a regular basis. I wouldn't wait for once a year. I would maybe do it every couple of months or every three months. Maybe you're going in, adding a little bit, tweaking, updating, fleshing another little section out. That That's okay. That's a good, healthy exercise, I think, for you as a business. Okay, so in conclusion, what what did we talk about today? Let's just do a review. We talked about what's uh, you know why is it important to have a strategic plan. We talked about the purpose of a strategic plan. We went through those four or five or six parts of a strategic plan, and then we just shared some tips for fleshing out a strategic plan. So hopefully that that will help you guys. 
Uh, we will do some future episodes where we go in and, and talk specifically about SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Maybe we'll pick a business and, um, and we'll, we'll go through a SWAT exercise. I think I'd like to do a future episode just about setting goals for your business. Once you have some of your strategic plan defined, I think that would be helpful. Um, uh, we want to talk about, I want to do an episode on tactical plans. I think that's also important. I'm going to try and start doing some little extras, so some extra video audio chunks, you know, um, and, and I'm going to try and make those available. I don't have it yet, but we're going to put up a Patreon page and uh, you guys are going to be able to, to support uh, for a very small monthly fee. You'll be able to support the podcast and, and get access to those extras. So I think from this episode, I want to uh, maybe walk through uh, just fleshing out a strategic plan for a professional association chapter. And, um, and then maybe we'll do another one. Just as an example, we'll do a small GIS software company. Those are both things I'm interested in. And so we could, we'll, we could, uh, I could sit down with you guys and we could pull up just an outline and kind of flesh it out. What would it, what might a strategic point look like for those two different, two, those two different entities? Um, I also want to let you know, if you'd like to uh, be a sponsor of the podcast, I think we're up to episode number, this is number nine. Um, I am looking for a sponsor, so I have hired a, a really great uh, young lady named Carly who's helping me uh, with the podcast, so she's helping me uh, do the show notes and do some editing and other things like that. Um, I also have the web hosting costs and you know the, the cost for the software that I used to do all the editing. So if you'd like to help support me, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you provide a product or service for land surveyors or GIS professionals, and you want to be a sponsor, reach out to me. It's got to be a quality product or service. I don't want, I don't want to promote garbage. Uh, but you know, if you have a good product or service and you think it would, it would help people that would be listening to this podcast, let me know. It doesn't just have to be an ad. You know, I can do a review or I can interview you, do a short interview or something like that. Um, so let me know if you're interested in helping sponsor the podcast, just reach out to me. My contact info is all over the web. Um, and as I mentioned, for, for just the folks that are just listening but maybe don't want to sponsor, we'll have a Patreon page coming soon. I don't know, $10 a month or something like that, $20 a month. You'll be able to support the podcast and, and get some extra content. Uh, but either way, even if I don't get any sponsors or Patreon support, I, I'll, I'm going to try and keep doing the podcast because I do believe it is important. Next episode, what are we talking about? Let me check my notes. I think I'm going to talk about hourly rates on the next episode. That will be episode number 10. Episode number 10 will be how do you calculate hourly rates for your surveying and mapping organization. Again, going to be geared toward a private business, but you know, it might also apply to somebody like a, a, a city surveying department or a county surveying department. You, know, you may have to have hourly rates for your, for your budgeting. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to take a deep dive into that, man. We'll figure out all the things that need to go into to an hourly rate and give you some tips on how you calculate it. So Thank you for listening, guys. I appreciate it. That's going to wrap up our episode for today. Once again, I want to thank you guys for listening. appreciate that. Don't forget, you can check out the podcast, download episodes, view show notes at www.landonblake.com. You can also subscribe to the podcast on YouTube and Spotify. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast or you have a suggestion for a future topic for an episode, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find my contact information all over the web. Landon Blake, I'd love to hear from you. And we will catch you guys on the next episode. Thanks.
Thank you.